Currently in a PC world, AMD is being treated like a both the saviour of the universe and also a rather passive aggressive Santa Claus. And I'm saying that because even though people constantly shower them with praise, a shower I'm assuming that is made up of the tears of Intel fanboys, but whenever they do anything that can be considered slightly anti-consumer and people go after them saying that they turned into the monster that they swore to defeat. So after the recent you know, scandal that broke out in which AMD has said that older AM4 motherboards will not support the new Ryzen 4000 chips, people were rather angry and was again grasping to the poor hearts saying that they're turning into Intel and then a few days later AMD said that they are going to make it work somehow. They didn't specify how, just that they are going to make it work somehow. And now recently after a review of the brand new B550 boards everyone is just ready to explode with excitement that amazing budget motherboards are coming but at what cost? Because for the most part B550 has created a lot more questions. Is it better than X570? Does it make X570 obsolete? Does it make B450 obsolete? Is B450 still the undisputed chip say when it comes to AM4 motherboards? Will it retain its crown as the thing that the fanboys completely lose their minds over? And even if you just suggest that you may buy anything other than a B450 motherboard, they're gonna just gonna latch onto you and attack you? Or will B550 take that honor instead and become the brand new, toxic yet lovable chipset for everyone? Well, it's a complicated question and my hair keeps constantly flopping in my face. So I'm not sure if you caught the pattern when it comes to AMD Ryzen motherboard so far, but unintentionally or not, the B chipsets are the budget ones. Pretty easy to remember, right? And then the X are the extreme motherboards. So, X570 versus B550. Let's just go straight into the topic, shall we? So many people say that X570 will become completely obsolete, but that isn't really the case. There are still quite a few things it does better than B550. Not only does it have the normal advantage of X chipsets, that has way more VRMs and usually way more connectivity than the B chipset counterparts, but now with these current 500 series chipsets, another important aspect to consider is PCIe Gen 4. With X570, you get way more PCIe Gen 4 lanes. While with B550 motherboards, you usually get enough for just one graphics card, so an, a full X16 slot, and also one or two M.2 PCIe X4 slots. Now, thankfully, unlike B450, where a lot of the secondary slots I guess if you want to call them, basically the ones you, where you don't plug in your graphics card, most of them were actually PCIe Gen 2 still, apart from, you know, mainly M.2 slots. But now in B550, everything is either PCIe Gen 4 or PCIe Gen 3. But does it even matter right now? Well, this is where it gets complicated, because if you're using a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, one of the main uses of PCIe Gen 4 right now, then you probably also have the money for an X570 motherboard, which will give you even more features. However, it gets interesting when you consider graphics cards. Even though PCIe Gen 4 graphics cards aren't super mainstream right now, they are becoming more and more popular thanks to the recent offerings by AMD, and we're pretty much certain that the brand new Ampere-based graphics cards from NVIDIA will also be PCIe Gen 4 based. So when you go to pick up your brand new PCIe Gen 4 based graphics card, so I guess that makes the B550 slightly more future proof, even though I know that people really hate that word in the tech community for some reason. And the issue is that with only one real PCIe Gen 4 slot in B550, you won't be able to use any other cool PCIe Gen 4 technologies that will come down the line, like network cards. PCIe Gen 4 network is going to allow for some insane speeds, and unless you go with a pretty decent X570 board, you're gonna miss out on that. But for most people, that is something they won't really consider because that kind of solution would cost way too much money. So what else does B550 offer then? Well, unlike B450 motherboards, you can run two graphics cards on B550, but that's like buying a bottle of the world's most expensive wine and then drinking it out of a plastic cup, because if you have the money for two graphics cards in your setup, then you probably also have the money to go X570. And it has a lot better connectivity than B450, but still pretty poor compared to X570, which also joined by the fact that it's been out for almost a year now, it makes it that the motherboards for X570 are rather cheap now, with some having even rather competitive pricing compared to B550 boards. So does that just mean that B550 is done and done for? Well, no. Basically, if you're on B450 right now, then B550 won't offer anything that's too... Um, 
different or amazing for you. Most of the stuff you either already have or won't really need. So if you're on B450 and thinking of upgrading your motherboard, then I'll just say don't or go X570 if you need those extra connectivity features, B say Gen 4, uh, extra VRMs. But again, after a year, X570 prices are actually coming in really close to B550. But if you're just starting out in this brand new era of AM4 based CPUs, then B550 is a great choice if you know, don't want to go all out and don't need the features of X570. So basically B550 is a new B450. If you plan on going AMD, go B550. Simple. Because despite of what can seem like quite a few flaws at first, well, overall, it's still a great replacement. Well, at least in most cases. And if you want something more, well, X570 is there and better priced now than ever. Well, maybe not right now because I've done the, you know, whole global pandemic thing, but apart from but small details, am I right? So there, bask upon one of the only good things that seem to be happening this year as we have a new, great and affordable chipset if you plan on going AMD. And hey, if you want to go X570, go like X570, it's still amazing, I run it. And by the way, if you want to get yourself an amazing budget X570 motherboard, the X570 Euro Elite, which I have and actually made two videos on now, uh, which will be up in iCards, and I'll have our Amazon link down in the videos to below for that motherboard. Because if you buy it for that, then we get a bit of the money and you don't pay anything extra, not even a cent. It's amazing, it's just, it's like Christmas come early for both of us. And if you already have your dream PC set up and don't really have anything else to spend the money on right now, then I recommend checking out our Patreon, which is down in the video description below. As if one dollar a month goes a long way in helping me make way better videos and also videos on way more interesting topics. But I guess that's really it, so I hope you enjoyed this weekly video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I'm up next. Oh, and before I go, we're getting really close to 2k subs, so keep on subscribing and let me know what you want to see for a 2k sub special. I'm, I have some ideas already and I'm really, really excited. Okay, now seriously, goodbye everyone. Goodbye.